Um, welcome, everyone. It's a tough job to have the first talk in the morning, but I'll do my best. Uh, thank you very much to Augustine and E. Daly for hosting the summit here and for inviting me as a speaker. It's a great honor. Um, my name is Klaus. I'm the CEO of uh, Didishas, and we are basically a provider of white-label B2B technology solutions for tokenization. So from us, you can get your own customized solution to tokenize your assets, basically. So we give you full control over the, the management process, the, fund, the fundraising process, corporate management of investors and, and tokens, and our solution supports internal trading, dividends, share cap table management, and so forth. It's a highly customizable and configurable solution with many configuration options and an open API. So it can be integrated into your existing systems and really uh, configured and customized to your specific requirements. We work with trusted legal firms around the world. We have more than 150 clients in 40 different countries, so we have quite a global coverage. And I think we have more than 80 legal firms that we work with to ensure that our clients and, and you are, and, 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 and we are compliant. We are also soon launching an exchange to, for tokenized real estate, so a blockchain-based exchange, peer-to-peer -peer trading for real estate assets. Brief introduction to the blockchain. I don't know the level of expertise here, so I always, always include this in my, some of my presentations. I have two intuitions that I really like to speak about when I think about the blockchain that, for me, are important in order to understand how to use it and how it can give value. The first one is the double spending uh, element. So with physical cash, of course, you cannot spend it twice. Uh, it's very difficult and you risk to go to jail if you copy the cash and spend it more than once. With centralized digital cash, which is what you have in the bank, also the banking system prevents you from spending it twice. And with the Bitcoin paper coming out 15 years ago, the blockchain was invented that also prevents uh, electronic cash from being spent more than once, which is actually quite a, a feat because if you have like a software program or a music uh, video or something like that, you can quite easily duplicate it and send it to more than one person. And of course, if you have a scanned version of a, a banknote, you can also use it more than once to so send it to, to many people. So anything that is digital needs more sort of innovative technology in order to be prevented from being spent more than once. And this is what happened with the Bitcoin paper. So on the blockchain, we have absolute certainty that uh, the value we have in our wallet can only be spent once. And similar with digital assets, digital securities and so on, they can only be sent to other people once within the blockchain network. And of course, that is a crucial element in order to be able to use the blockchain for financial transactions. Second intuition is that, of course, it's a global ledger, a global Excel sheet, a global database. So you can be absolutely sure that whatever is contained in this uh, global Excel sheet, there is consensus about, and you have 100% certainty that the contents of the rows and the columns are always correct, and that there is global consensus about it. So the, the blockchain implements a consensus algorithm that in, maintains massive incentive to keep the contents of this global database uh, the same for everyone, uh, and it, it also introduces massive disincentives to introduce false information or to try to, to, to falsely modify information within the, the database. So, of course, it gives us a very secure environment to transact with digital currencies and digital securities, which we'll speak about here today. This is uh, an example of how correspondent banking can be in, improved using blockchain technology. In, exist, in the existing system, if you want to transfer money from one bank to, an, to another bank in another country, you have to go through many uh, corresponding banks. It takes several days, and it's quite expensive. It's a very sort of uh, old-fashioned, complicated system, whereas on the chain, of course, you can directly convert, from, transfer from wallet to wallet in a few uh, minutes, and the, the, the cost and the price is extremely low. Similarly, if you do trading on an exchange, the existing system is highly complicated and involves many different actors, as you can see on the left side here. Whereas if you trade uh, on the chain, you can do it peer-to-peer -peer directly from wallet to wallet uh, in a few minutes with uh, instant almost instant settlement. 
So tokenization is basically an activity that occurs on the on the chain. So it's it's basically the concept of representing a security or a share in some underlying asset as a token on the chain. In our case, we primarily tokenize, or our clients primarily tokenize real estate, and it's typically done the way that an SPV is created, a legal entity is created that owns the underlying asset or property, but then we tokenize the shares of that specific entity. This is, this is what we see in 95% of all projects that are carried out by our clients. Um, and of course, tokenization done this way is much more efficient and less expensive than what we see done in the existing financial system. There are many benefits of tokenization that are sort of briefly, briefly described here. So we basically digitize, modernize, and automate workflows related to investor onboarding, subscription, and trading. And we can, in, in that way, sort of introduce massive administrative savings in, 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 in different sort of uh, securities transactions. Due to the sort of massive automation and cost reduction that we can achieve, we can also fractionalize. We can handle thousands of investors as easily as we can handle 10 or 20 investors today. That allows us to target retail, reduce the ticket size for down from maybe 100,000 down to 100 US dollars, and sort of allowing retail investors to, to get access and to be able to invest into tokenized assets. It also allows for peer-to-peer -peer trading. Uh, we have the, the, the payment, the currency in digital form. We also have the asset itself, tokenized share in the, in, the, in the legal entity that owns the property. And we can, in that way, sort of make a peer-to-peer -peer atomic swap-based smart contract that trades between two wallets without counterparty risk. This is a huge innovation compared to what we see in the market today in the traditional systems. If you look at existing traditional crowdfunding platforms for real estate that are not using uh, blockchain technology, they will typically not have trading available because this, is, this, this has to be done on the chain in order to, to have no counterparty risk. So basically, um, with a system like ours, you can get your own system to tokenize, you can get full control over the tokenization process, you can automate a lot of processes relating to investor onboarding, trading, investments, and so on. You can reduce costs due to the uh, automation at, and, uh, and cost savings. You can make your assets more liquid. Making uh, a real estate property more liquid into do, gets rid of the illiquidity premium of 20 to 30 percent. So you can actually into, in, you can actually increase the value of the asset 20 to 30 percent just by making it liquid. This is well documented in many industry reports. Um, you can open up for retail by fractionalizing and reducing the ticket size. You can actually make your assets more in interesting for institutional investors by making them more liquid. Finally, longer term, this is not really available yet to any significant degree. You can use your real estate backed tokens as collateral for DeFi lending. So you can access a DeFi lending ecosystem with tokenized and real estate backed tokens and, and use them as collateral to get extremely fast, efficient, and competitive uh, loans from the DeFi ecosystem. In the right side, you see two trends that are important to keep track of in order to see when sort of tokenization becomes a mass market uh, thing. The first one is um, we want, of course, to target retail generally with, uh, with the tokenization. So it's important that a lot of individual retail investors knows about uh, real estate assets, for instance, or real-world assets in general, they know how to invest into it and they, f they find it, they have to find it interesting to invest into it. So we can see the trend actually with REITs, so are, so much, which are traded real estate on existing exchanges, and there we can see a quickly in 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 increasing trend with more and more individual investors actually investing into REITs. And we expect to see the same trend with tokenized real estate in the next few years. It's also important, of course, that we have more and more users of, of the chain itself, more and more active wallets, and this trend we can also see is increasing quite fast. Um, and we think it will continue to increase as, as wallets become more and more easy to use and actually sort of become, will be, be merging sort of with normal bank accounts. So banks will also be providing wallets. Um, 
telephone companies will be providing wallets. You'll get wallets on your smartphone and so on, so it'll become so easy to use that it'll sort of merge with your existing bank account longer term. In a similar way, we see also tokenization becoming more like an infrastructure in the future and actually sort of merge, merging into the background and not become, be sort of a, a concept in itself, but just becoming the normal way of doing things, becoming the sort of new infrastructure for the financial ecosystem. So basically, um, the more retail real estate investors we get and the more wallet owners, the more active wallets we get, the more tokenization users we get. So due to these trends that we see, it's, uh, it's almost a certainty, it's a no-brainer that tokenization will eventually become extremely widespread and will be used everywhere in the world in order to facilitate transactions with securities. It's also uh, recognized by the large financial uh, services firms that this will be the case. Uh, Citi expects tokenization to grow up to a, a value of four trillion within the next two years. Boston Consulting Group uh, expects it to grow to like 16 trillion over the next few years. Um, BlackRock sees tokenization as the next evolution and revolution in financial markets. And uh, JP Morgan sees it as, as a traditional finances killer app. So they are extremely interested in tokenization, which is not, not really a surprise because they can also use it a lot for their internal uh, optimization of transactions. They can use it internally to, to sort of automate, digitize, optimize transactions relating to new investor subscriptions, uh, internal trading and settlement, um, and sort of general cost reduction. And they can also use it to make their assets more liquid. We are primarily focused on the real estate market. We have clients tokenizing other assets as well, but I think 80% of our clients today are working in the real estate industry. Real estate is a massive asset class. It's 326.5 trillion US dollars in total. And it's also an asset class that is almost totally inaccessible to normal investors and almost totally illiquid. Only about 1% of global real estate is accessible and liquid in the form of listed REITs on stock exchanges. And um, retail investors in general, even though they hold almost half the, the global wealth, are only invested into real estate to a very limited degree. So there is a potential to get real estate, or retail investors into real estate that will massively provide new cash for the asset class. And there's also a, an opportunity to get institutional investors to invest more into real estate. They don't like real estate so much today because it's illiquid. They prefer to invest into liquid assets. So there's also the, uh, the opportunity of getting more institutional capital. So it's, it's an asset class that is really ripe for disruption. We have uh, many uh, different use cases among our clients. So here are a few uh, relevant uh, use cases that I will briefly describe. Um, the first one, which we see in a few cases, is sort of uh, basic process optimization and cost reduction, using tokenization for internal transaction uh, automation to manage investors, to manage shareholders in the form of uh, tokens, and to use uh, sort of the chain to update the share cap table over time, and also to facilitate internal transactions and so on. We have uh, a US client, Marco Polo Exchange, using our system in this way. <clears throat> this, is, this is the easiest way to use tokenization. It can be done right away and can be sort of implemented quite fast. So it's sort of the lowest hanging fruit. The second uh, use case is what we see mo the most people using the system or, or the tokenization for. This is basically to do an STO, a security token offering, um, for ba basically for fundraising purposes. We have a number of cli clients doing this for their own assets, their own sort of uh, issued projects, but we also have a number of clients use doing it for third parties in sort of as a crowdfunding uh, use case. Equito is a Spanish company doing it, uh, using our system as a backend. They developed a, a mobile app as a front end, and they are sort of facilitating crowdfunding into Spanish high quality properties in both fiat and crypto, taking down to 100 euros as investment into these, uh, uh, these uh, products. And they also paid dividends out in crypto. They recently uh, funded a project, I think, in only a few minutes, so they're quite successful in, in their application of, of, uh, of the tokenization. The last use case is also the most advanced, and this is basically to tokenize an asset and then list it on exchange. We've done this with uh, one project called MarketSpace Capital in the US, 
with a property called the Spotted Mile Park, multifamily property in, in Texas. Um, they tokenized it using our platform, then they listed on the T-Zero exchange, and they actually had uh, a value increase of, I think, 23% after one year of having the, the asset listed. So it sort of documents the idea that uh, making an asset liquid will remove the illiquidity premium and increase the value with 20 to 30%. They have actually since delisted recently, quite recently, the, the asset due to the, the cost not being sort of uh, aligned with the benefit from, from their side, but we hope we can actually get them to relist again on our own exchange when it becomes active. The tokenization process has sort of three uh, different uh, workflows, a business, a legal, and a technical workflow. We are primarily concerned with the technical workflow as, as a technology provider in the space. We help, we help set up the server, set up the system itself, customize and configure so it matches to your requirements. Um, we can integrate with different uh, custodians, payment service providers, KYC providers, and so on. And of course, we will train you in using the system. But there's also a business <coughs> process that we can, to some degree, participate in and uh, facilitate. There are also specialized consultants in the market and the ecosystem that can help with this. Uh, capability and sort of help determine the business case around the tokenization project itself and uh, make sure that it gives value to investors. Then there's the legal process, which is still unfortunately quite uh, demanding for most tokenization projects, where you have to select the jurisdiction to tokenize in, <coughs> in, in, in regards legal and tax. Many countries still do not fully support tokenization. Where you, and you have to speak to the regulator, work in a sandbox and so on, and engage with legal partners for a long time. <clears throat> for that reason, we often uh, recommend to work in, in a jurisdiction that always al already support tokenization, similar to the US, for instance. We have many clients around the world that use the US as jurisdictional base for their projects because it's just much easier and it's less expensive and it's, it's fully recognized by the SEC how to, how to tokenize. Um, there are a lot of requirements around KYC and uh, further sort of legal requirements and often you have to develop subscription agreements and so on, uh, prospectus in some cases and so on, it's quite costly, but um, we have many legal partners and we can help sort of find the legal partners that can do the best job at a reasonable price. So about us, <laughs> we are basically providing uh, a white label uh, platform where you can sort of do your own tokenization, you can manage investors, investor onboarding, KYC and AML. You can facilitate the investment into tokens using both fiat and crypto. You can electronically sign documents, subscription agreements, trading notes and so on using a DocuSign integration. Uh, the share cap table will be managed within the system and the system actually acts as a, sort of the legal um, share cap table management system over multiple share classes where some can be tokenized, others can be not, not tokenized. You can pay out dividends from the system using both fiat and crypto. And there's also an internal sort of bulletin board, OTC-like marketplace where you can make facilitate internal trading. And in many countries, you can actually run this marketplace without having a license. So you can actually facilitate sort of self-sufficient uh, trading peer-to-peer -peer between your shareholders without, without any kind of license. As long as, it's, as long as you're trading your own assets, and it's, it's sort of as a walled garden where no one else has access. Then we are also launching an exchange to trade real estate in a few months, um, fully blockchain-based, peer-to-peer, trading between wallets, from wallet to wallet, self-custodied wallets, access for both retail and accredited investors. We will launch in the US first, possibly in Q4 this year, even though time is, is running out for that, uh, and in Europe next year. And the first version will be like an order book marketplace. And then we are coming uh, with an automated market maker based system with liquidity pools. And finally, uh, a Cosmos app chain in version three. So tokenization is also uh, an option to do uh, good in the world, I would say, to, to um, <clears throat> work on uh, sustainability and impact and uh, provide democratization, especially of uh, the access <clears throat> to invest into real estate as an asset class. We find this to be quite uh, important for us as a motivation to develop tokenization and also to many of, for many of our clients. So with fractionalization, you can give retail investors globally, even in unbanked countries, access to invest into real estate and real-world assets. 
so they can actually protect their savings, grow their savings over time, and possibly sort of help to close the global wealth gap. <clears throat> also, um, of course, using any kind of application on the blockchain itself provides increased transparency. You can see all the transactions that are carried out on the, on the chain, and you can track them back to the source. So from, you could say, a tax and sort of a criminal perspective, the chain is a great uh, technology for running financial transaction systems because it will be easy to sort of solve any kind of crime. And it will also be more difficult to, to uh, conduct fraud and corruption on a blockchain-based uh, system. So uh, that's basically it for me. Um, we have a booth out here in, in, in the other room, so you can meet me out there. Uh, we are also looking for strategic partners here in Korea, and we are happy to discuss with anyone interested in this. Um, we have a, a reseller program, and we have different ways to engage with us, and uh, we are quite easy to, uh, to reach. So thank you very much. This is uh, my presentation. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Scanning.